Hello and welcome to Eva's House of Spirit. I'm Eva and I wanted to take some time now to talk a little bit about hands in spirituality and magic and, you know, those related sort of, you know, concepts. I just, what got me to thinking about hands, you may notice I'm wearing gloves right now. Um, these are moisturizing gloves and the reason why I'm wearing them is that being that this is winter, this is the season where our hands kind of get real beat up um, by that very dry, you know, kind of air, especially indoors and from all, you know, obviously I wash my hands a lot. Um, you know, I, I'm constantly, constantly washing things and just washing my hands, obviously for sanitary reasons. And what happened was, my skin started really getting dried out really bad. So, um, what I did a little bit ago, a few hours ago, is I went over to my pantry, I took out my coconut oil, I spooned some out, and I put it in the palm of my hand, and I rubbed my hands together really well, and I put on my moisturizing gloves, and I'm gonna be wearing them probably for a good while. Um, you know, because coconut oil or if you don't have coconut oil you can use olive oil any kind of cooking oil any kind of really good oil I think is one of the best moisturizers anyway before I continue on my story about hands and spirituality um, and when you put on the moisturizing gloves it really helps the moisture to stay in it helps that moisture to lock in so anyway so I'm moisturizing my hands because they've been very you know in need of attention and I started thinking about you know, symbolism of hands and the role that hands play in our lives and kind of the idea of hands and spirituality. And <clears throat> I thought about a lot of different things. Um, I thought about how our hands are sort of very much like our craft, regardless of what our path is. Our hands can do good or ill, you know, depending on how we choose to utilize them. You know, hands can harm, hands can heal, hands can accomplish many things. Um, so there's that basic idea. Um, I thought about, you know, how hands can even be a, a tool of communication, you know, sign language for those that, you know, are deaf. Um, I thought about, you know, magical or spiritual hand gestures that can convey intentions. You know, um, like when someone, let's say, says something that is sort of ill will, you know, directed at someone else. Italians, for example, there's a folk belief that um, if someone says something to you that's kind of like, where did that come from? Like, that's kind of nasty. Like, don't speak that evil over me. A lot of um, Italian people, they will wait till that person turns their back and they will make the sign of the horns like downward and, and away from themselves. Kind of like, that evil, I send it to hell. That, that evil, I send it away from me. Like, I get that off of me. Don't speak that evil over me. With the horns, I send that back. Um, and some people view the horn symbol as either, you know, like, you can look at it as the horns of the devil. You can look at it as the horns of the crescent moon. However you choose to look at it, you can look at it as symbolically the horns of a horned animal. You know, when an animal gets into a fighting stance and kind of like fights something or, you know, another animal away or fights, you know, they, they kind of put out that offensive sort of protective stance. Well, you can kind of see that in the horn gesture. So there's that. Um, I, I thought about the idea of Hamsa hands. I don't know if, you've, um, if you're familiar with the idea of Hamsa hands. You may have seen charms. Um, I believe they're Eastern in origin. I want to say Indian, but I 
don't want to say it definitely because I have to check into that. I don't want to give you the wrong information. I know they're Eastern in origin. A hamsa hand is an image of a hand. Usually it's like facing down and there is like an eye in the middle. And a hamsa hand will have all kinds of scroll work and intricate designs. And people often either get them as tattoos or they will, you know, um, have them as emblems painted onto something or drawn onto something, or they will maybe sometimes have the jewelry of a Hamsa hand. Hamsa hand works very much like the concept of the anti-evil eye. Um, you know how you, you've seen, I'm sure, the blue glass eye beads? Well, the Hamsa hand kind of works the same way. It, you know, the hand, you know, outward like this, that, that op you know, that hand kind of is almost making like a stopping gesture you know, to stop the evil in its tracks. The eye in the middle works just like the blue anti-evil eye beads. You know, it, it deflects and, and sends back that ill intent. Um, you can also, I guess, sort of infer that because the hand is faced downward, you know, the digits facing downward, like they kind of not only stop the negativity, but sort of direct it down and away from the self, almost grounding it into the earth. Um, so there's that concept. I thought about the concept of Hamsa hands. I also thought about the concept of um, monopoderoso candles, which um, it's like, how can I uh, translate that, I guess, literally? Monopoderoso is like powerful hand, um, but some people will refer to those, uh, the, the mano poderoso as the helping hand. Um, it's an image of the hand of divinity, uh, usually, so usually, um, because it's sort of like a, a Catholic symbol, people will see it sort of as the hand of God and there are saints on each digit of each finger. And there's like, um, if I'm remembering correctly, I think in the palm, there is, um, there is like the, there's an open, um, there's an open wound, I guess. I think, I think if I'm remembering correctly, um, there's an open wound that symbolizes like the stigmata, um, if I'm remembering correctly. But basically the, the mano poderoso, the helping hand or the powerful hand, um, it symbolizes sort of like the hand of God that intervenes for you. And people that um, practice a lot of folk magics uh, utilizing sort of Catholic um, symbolism toward their, you know, toward their seeking to manifest intentions will sometimes burn Mano Poderoso seven-day candles or they will use Mano Poderoso incenses or oils. Um, and these are meant to... Um, sort of evoke and, and, you know, call forth, you know, the, the uh, helping hand of God to sort of intervene when things are not looking so good. Um, I've used the Mono Podro, the Mono Podroso um, candles before, and I have found um, success in working with them. Um, but you need not be like Catholic in order to see the symbolism of the divine hand. You know, I believe that's another thing I want to say as a side note. I understand like not everything resonates with everybody, but um, sometimes it's not bad to look at the symbols, signs, um, the, uh, what else, the, the, associative um, talismans or, or empowered um, ideas, I guess I could say, of other paths, other faiths, as long as you understand the concept behind them and as long as um, you understand what they mean to convey, you can use them as um, focal points in your work and you can use them with your own intentions to bring forth what it is you're seeking. It doesn't mean that you have to necessarily um, convert your way of thinking or convert your path or any of that. And, you know, as long as you don't have any really overly negative associations with a symbol or a sign, and as long as you understand kind of, you know, what it means, I think it's okay just just to make that side note to utilize um, things that are from 
you know, other paths or other ways, you know what I'm saying? As long as, you know, you don't have anything to, to sort of trigger your, your psyche in a negative way, you know, nothing associated with that imagery that kind of makes you cringe. As long as there's none of that, you know, um, I think it's, it's actually pretty good to incorporate, you know, um, things from, from other, you know, ideas, symbols, um, things like that from other paths, other faiths, you know, you might want to think about that. Maybe it'll work for you. Um, so yeah, I've used the Mono Poderoso. Um, granted, of course, uh, I, I come from a family that, um, essentially is Catholic and, um, I was raised with Catholic ideas. Uh, we didn't, we didn't go to like church. We, we weren't part of that whole, um, institution, uh, growing up, but, you know, I, I can see, and I have nothing against, um, a lot of like, you know, Catholic imagery, symbolism, whatever. I, you know, I find it to be another helpful source to draw on among the many sources that I will turn to, you know, in, in, you know, sort of going about my, uh, spiritual pursuits and my magical pursuits. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Hands as tools. Um, that's another concept I wanted to touch upon. Excuse me, I need a drink of my coffee. A lot of times in, uh, in Wicca, for example, or in many other paths that utilize, um, a lot of the same sorts of tools, um, that, Wiccans or, you know, pagans in general will use. A lot of times, um, the question will come up like, oh, you know, um, I don't have a lot of money for tools. Uh, I'm interested though in wands and athames, for example, things of that sort, or some other tool that usually serves as a director of power. Well, um, one thing I have always felt, and I'm sure many of you are aware of this too, it's not like some major uh, epiphany, but hands obviously are generators of power. So um, you need not really um, use or have an athame or a wand if that is part of your, um, if, if that is, if those are tools that you would like to work with, but at the moment you don't have, let's say, money or the means to acquire them or make them, or for whatever reason, uh, maybe you're in a situation where you kind of got to keep your tools, like, to a minimum, because maybe your family or people around you that you live with, maybe they're not um, exactly so cool with your alternate faith. Well, a lot of people will simply, you know, use their hands, you know, either a finger or two fingers like extended, you know, to like direct, like when you're visualizing, for example, if you work with uh, casting circles, you can, you know, use your, your extended fingers in place of using a wand to point out as you're drawing your circle, visualizing your circle, you can do that. Um, when you, if you do, uh, for example, you know, water and salt, if you do the uh, blessing of the water, the blessing of the salt, and then bringing them together, you know, in the symbolic great rite where many people will have the chalice and then the athame will be lowered down into it. And, you know, you're saying your prayers and intentions of blessing, you know, the, the salt and, you know, in the water, when you add the, the salt to the water, um, or even like when you're just going with your athame, into the bowl of salt first to bless it, and then into the chalice of water to bless it, you know, and then when you add your pinches, and then you lower the athame before you, like, stir. Because some people do it that way. Maybe you don't do it that way, but if someone does it that way, or, or wants to do it that way, and they don't have an athame, you can simply use a, a finger or two fingers, you know, into the bowl of salt, you know, go about your visualizations, your blessings, your intentions, you know, I bless this creature of salt, you know, that anything that it may come in contact with will be blessed, consecrated, cleansed, whatever. And then you would do the same with your water, like bless this creature of water, you know, that anything that it will come in contact with, you know, will bless, cleanse, whatever, you know. And then when you add your pinches of salt into the water, you know, you could put your finger kind of into the salt and water mixture before you stir. You know, you can say something along the lines of, you know, 
this this is a symbol of the great right um, by which all life you know comes forth um, I bless this salt and water together that it will be an agent of cleansing consecration so on and so forth you know and then you would stir obviously and then you can go about you know using your your salt and your water to bless if that's something that you do not everybody does but you know you can simply use your hands your hands are just as powerful you know it's nice to you know have nice tools if that's something you like to have it's nice to have you know a real cool athame you know if it's something you feel drawn to working with or it's nice to have you know a wand if that's something you feel connected to but you know you really need not have those things um, your hands your hands are just as powerful um, and what else did I want to talk about um, healing touch for example um, that's I think something very sacred um, he, people that practice um, healing um, healing ways such as Reiki or, or massage therapy you know they, it, it's really sometimes people forget like like how healing hands can be like even just sometimes a simple you know embrace holding someone when they're you know upset wiping away someone's tears you know parents I'm sure you know you know all about healing touch and you know when you connect with your children you know you hold them you know your hands feed them these are tools that you you know use every day to care for your family to love your family you know and I think it's very important so these ideas that I've touched upon speaking about the concept of hands I think um, hands are inherently sacred now that's not to say if for whatever reason you don't have a hand or hands um, that there's anything wrong I just uh, all I'm trying to say is that um, hands are a sacred symbol they are sacred tools you know if you are fortunate enough to have you know the use of your hands well you know what acknowledge that you know count that in your blessings as silly as that sounds you know sometimes we forget simple things like that like hey isn't it great that I have these hands that can do so much for me you know isn't it great that you know I can help I can heal I can cast my magic with this I you know I can do so much there, there's so much inherent potential in hands as not just um, you know a the blessing that you know for those of us that again are fortunate enough to have hands you know we are we're blessed to have them that's nice um, but also as a sign, as a symbol. You know, I think there's there's a lot of depth there if we really start thinking about the idea of hands. Um, I'm going to link some some videos, articles in the description of this video. Um, basically, I made this video to just kind of sort of start everybody kind of thinking along the lines of acknowledging hands you know I think everything in in nature everything in life serves a purpose and has a deeper sort of um, spirituality associated with it I mean if you really think about it there isn't I don't think there's anything really in existence that doesn't have some association somewhere to spirituality um, be it in one polarity or the other uh, be it in one way or another um, whether they are man-made things whether they are natural things I think everything has a place and everything has a purpose and I think sometimes um, when we allow ourselves a few moments to really stop and think about what things mean and what things do and the role things serve and if we just really kind of explore sort of meditate you know open your mind really look around you at the world around you you know there's really so much there staring you right in the face that sometimes we just sort of forget all about um, I don't know that there are really a lot of authors that write on the subject of hands and spirituality but maybe there should be um, 
and I think that uh, certain things like this maybe should be acknowledged, you know, and and I really do try, um, just, just to make this one note, I really do try in a lot of my videos to bring forth thoughts and ideas that sometimes people um, forget. Like, for example, I have a video, uh, Magic in Shoes. I don't know too many people that really think about their shoes in a magical or spiritual sense. Um, some people do, I'm sure, but it's not a very widely... Um, touched upon topic, as far as I'm aware. So I thought I would bring you um, this video just to sort of introduce the topic of hands as, you know, spiritual things, as magical things. And I welcome your thoughts, feelings, questions, comments, anything in the comment box. Please feel free. Um, once again, I will be linking some further material in the description of this video. <clears throat> and. As I go about my continuing meditation and thoughts on this subject, because I'm sure I will return to this subject, you know, at some point I will think about this again. I'm just sort of a person like that. Like, I may come to think about something, then like, you know, I'll kind of place it on the back burner, and then I'll kind of revisit it like later on. Um, if I have any other uh, insights, thoughts, whatever, um, in the future, I will be, I, I will if I do, um, sort of have any other ideas come to me or thoughts come to me along this subject. I will be making another video or videos, depending. Um, or even if any of you sort of spark um, any kind of inspiration or thoughts or, you know, whatever in me by bringing forth your comments, questions, whatever, maybe that'll even spark me to um, make another video or videos sort of along these lines. But um, yeah, so I just thought I would introduce this as a concept, and um, I would love to hear from you all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope um, it's given you sort of something to begin thinking about. Um, maybe in your Witch's Notebook or Book of Shadows, you could um, sort of take some time to write about this subject, really explore it sort of on your own. What do hands mean to you? Um, what... Uh, what roles do, uh, in, in terms of spirituality and magic, um, do you see hands as performing? Are there any spells that um, you can think of or that you ha you can come across that have to do with hands or, utiliz or utilization of your hands? Um, just really, I think maybe... Um, think about the concept of hands in spirituality and magic and maybe see where that takes you. And with that, I bid you blessed be and ashe. And um, until next time, bye-bye for now.